Hello and a very warm welcome to all of you. I am Sainta from Beautiful Spotless Skin Team and I am sure all of you must be doing really good. So uh, a very warm welcome to all of you. On today we will be shedding light, light on a subject which is very close to all of us. I am talking about acne, acne vulgaries. Yes, acne is so common, so chronic. So it's a chronic skin condition and there are people who have uh, you know acne prone skin or oily skin then there are teenagers or young adults who uh, you know uh, with so much of acne especially when they attain puberty you know uh, because a lot of uh, hormone is changing in our body or even adults you know uh, especially in the case of acne so we know how annoying it is, how irritating it is to have acne. Many times it's painful and it's just not about the appearance. Deep down also it affects us. It's, it affects our confidence level as well. Many times people go into depression just because they have acne and it do have us there too. So today we will try to understand what is acne, why it happens, what are the various causes that may lead to acne formation, what are the various types of acne, various grades of acne. Because you know as a layman we know we have black head, uh, white head, uh, little bumps, many times it's, it's like a cyst, a small cyst uh, or a nodule and it's painful when it reaches that level. Um, a very common tradition that we all follow in our country is to apply something or on, on our acne on our face uh, various clay masks or you know various things from the kitchen etc uh, we are doing a lot of uh, DIY to it yourself kind of things uh, especially those influencers who are there on various social media platforms they have so many quick fixes for these skin related issues then we have over-the-counter topical applications medications as well that we go for because it's quite accessible easily uh, you know available for us but then we need to understand that these home remedies or over-the-counter uh, applications medications or even uh, DIYs, they can be really, uh, you know, uh, have side effects on our skin and they can make our condition even more worse. So, um, today we are going to be joined by Dr. Rajay Kumar Pillai, a renowned skin expert from Pochin. Uh, so, the, before he joins us, let me tell you about him. Uh, so, Dr. Jay Kumar Pillai, a distinguished consultant dermatologist and Trichologist and doctor has already joined a very warm welcome to you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. So uh, before we go further and, you know, uh, start talking about acne, let me introduce you to my audience. So Dr. Pillay completed his MBBS and MD in Dermatology, Venerology and Leprosy from Kim's Hospital, Bangalore, where he excelled academically with a first class in his MD examination. Uh, his expertise spans general dermatology, acne treatment, uh, uh, PRP therapy, etc., etc. He's also the member of prestigious uh, you know, organizations such as IADBL and ACSI and also IEFPAT. And uh, Dr. Billy continues to advance his skills through ongoing training and participation in national and international conferences. And uh, a very warm welcome to you once again, Dr. Jay Kumar Billy. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, Dr. Today we are going to talk about acne, and acne is something you know uh, which most of us have faced. Uh, you know, there is yeah. a phase, of course, when we attain puberty in our teens or. Uh, adolescents when we get these acnes or uh, if a person is having an oily or acne prone skin then also they'll have acne yeah. and in adults also we see a lot of yeah. acne so we'll try to understand the whole you know management system of acne but before that what is acne and how it is caused doctor okay so <clears throat> Uh, so for the listeners, I'll break it down to in a very simple, you know, um, simplified manner. I, okay, in a, in a layman language, I'll try to explain it. Okay, so um, as you know, our skin, right, our, uh, especially the skin of the face, the scalp and the chest, uh, the upper trunk has many small uh, glands in the skin. 
right? Uh, you know what is a glands, right? The glands which have secretion, which secretes something into the skin, right? So there are there are uh, sweat glands which secrete sweat. There is oil glands which secretes oil, right? So uh, whenever so the acne is a problem of the oil glands. It's a chronic inflammation of the sebaceous glands, which is basically the oil glands, right? So um, in our skin of the face, um, the oil glands which are present underneath, when they try, when they produce too much of oil, right? They produce too much of oil, uh, which goes through the duct and it opens into the pores of the skin. Now, what happens is that during puberty time or, uh, you know, during any stressful condition, if you're having any uh, medications or uh, if you're taking whey protein or some or all those kind of lifestyle uh, measures, what happens is that the sebaceous glands becomes hyperactive and they produces too much of oil. Okay. That. Right. It causes clogged pores. And then what happens, uh, we get something known as blackheads and whiteheads. Okay. In our medical terms, we call it as comedons, right? There is an open comedon and a closed comedon. Uh, in, in, a, in a non simplified manner, like uh, in a simplified manner, we can tell it as a blackhead or a whitehead. So these are basically uh, baby acne, right? So many of the teenagers do come to me with this complaint that is uh, whiteheads. I'm getting a lot of whiteheads. I have oily skin and stuff like that, right? So these are baby acne and we need to uh, kind of like intervene at that point. It is not something to, you know, uh, just ignore it. Okay. It's better to intervene because um, now what you have is uh, a lot of dust, uh, a lot of dirt cells is there, uh, dead cells are there and a lot of, uh, you know, oil, that is oil secretion, that is sebum is there. Now, what happens in a in a pile of garbage that gets infected, right? So, a uh, few bacteria which are which are there in our skin that kinds of infect those uh, those um, blackheads and whiteheads. And now the pimples becomes red. It can become pus filled. Okay, then it leads to more higher grades of acne. That is the red acne what we see, right? So this is how a uh, acne uh, forms. This is the the course of uh, uh, the acne formation. Yeah. Right, so we have various types or rather grades of acne and it's always right. a good idea to go to the doctor at the very first place when you see those exactly. you know, tiny baby acne as you said. Exactly. Uh, doctor, exactly. you know a very common condition in our society is to go for home remedies. We love applying things on our face. And as you said, you know, sebum secretion, excessive sebum secretion is one of the biggest causes of acne. What we feel is to keep our skin dry, you know, as much as possible is going to make us acne free. So we'll apply clay masks or, you know, we apply various kinds of things on our uh, acne, starting from toothpaste to garlic to right. a number of things. I'm sure you also get patients who have already tried all um, these new remedies. Yes. Do they use yes. more? Or they can be harmful. No, absolutely not. I won't. Uh, I won't recommend such kind of home remedies any time to my patients because, uh, see, first of all, if you have a problem with your skin, okay, if you have some some disorder or something going on with your skin, just seek medical help. Okay, that is the first thing which we should do. Uh, we kind of neglect this problem and we try uh, the so-called home remedies or uh, whatever our, our 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 family members say, and we try to experiment. Okay, so what happens is that is that the the skin might get irritated. Okay, the skin becomes sensitive. Okay, so uh, uh, now what happens is that when you actually um, uh, get damaged skin and then you go to a dermatologist, he uh, that uh, the, the treatment which the dermatologist provides might take a little time to recover. Okay, because you have already damaged your skin by using all the home care remedies and the routines and everything, right? So uh, see. When, whenever you get uh, a problem in your eye, you see an ophthalmologist, right? Right? You don't experiment with all the home remedies with your eye, right? So similar is the case with your skin too. Okay, it is a largest organ of your body. Uh, so I would suggest if you have a problem, okay, if you have anything going wrong with your skin, just consult a skin expert, okay? Um, uh, because we have studied, we have spent a lot of years of our uh, lives, okay, studying and understanding the pathophysiology of diseases. We know how the disease can progress how bad it can go uh, can uh, come and how to treat it okay so it's it's better to take uh, medical advice at the earliest 
Right. And similarly, you know, because one of the even more um, serious concern is that people goes for over-the-counter topical application, over-the-counter medication. So yep. even if I'll have a, the easiest way I have is to go to a chemist shop, ask that, you know, suggest something. I'm yes. having these pimples and they'll uh, give us a, you know, a topical application. And the problem is that initially those tubes perform wonderfully. Exactly. I mean, it was such a glowing skin in two days and the acne will start subsiding, etc, etc. And I'll fall for it. So um, everyone, I mean, most of us fall for it. So after, right. after a certain amount of time when we realize that we or our skin is getting addicted to that cream, you know, whenever we are not applying, we are having acne, etc. And we lands up in front of doctor, we realize that now uh, acne is there, that issue is there, but now we are, have other issues as well. Exactly. So please explain exactly. to us how bad these topical applications could be over the counter. Exactly. It's a, uh, that's a very nice point which you came up. Okay. Because I see in my practice, uh, these kind of patients a lot. Okay. So what happens um, uh, in, in, mo in most of uh, the population is that, uh, as I was telling that they don't take uh, the, the acne issues very seriously. And what they do, because uh, they become lazy, they don't want to go to a dermatologist, spend money. What they do is that they find a nearby chemist shop. Right. And they uh, they ask the chemist there, what can we do? Uh, what can be done for this condition? Right. So what happens is that the chemist has uh, has has only one cream. OK, so has just one cream to give to all the skin conditions. So this is what happens in a, a generally. Right. He has a triple combination. The triple combination means there are three medications uh, inside that one tube. OK, it, there is an antifungal, uh, there is an antibacterial and there is one steroid. Um, ingredient okay so what their knowledge is that something might work okay it is kind of like a, a you know a, a mixture of multiple ingredients a bomb kind of like so any any one thing might work okay so if he is having any itching okay the steroid might work if he's having any infection the antibacterial might work okay if he's having any uh, fungal infection okay round rashes in between his thighs antifungal might work so anything any one ingredient might work so that is the knowledge of uh, you know uh, the chemist so called chemist so I would never recommend to, uh, you know, compromise your skin safety like that. Okay. So uh, the, the most dangerous part among uh, all these three ingredients is the steroid part, right? So what happens when you apply steroid uh, continuously on your face? So first you might be applying because you have acne. Uh, now what happens is that the acne subsides for a while, okay, because the steroids has many anti-inflammatory effect, right? So it will give you those results in the initial days. It will take care of the marks uh, as well, okay, because the uh, steroid has that kind of effect as well, right? But over a longer period of time, when you start using that for, uh, you know, months or, uh, you know, six months, one year and all, uh, the actual side effects of the steroid uh, start showing on the skin, right? Now the skin becomes uh, very thin. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, the blood vessels start. Uh, we can we can see the blood vessels in the skin. It is something known as stelangiectasia. Okay, now the hair growth also starts uh, appearing in the face. Okay, especially in the females, they might see something known as hirsutism. That is a male pattern hair growth or hypertrichosis. Mm -hmm. So all these are the changes of the steroids. Now after seeing all these changes, if one decide to stop this cream. What happens is that the skin, skin has become too much dependent on that particular cream. It is kind of like alcohol to the skin, right? So you are supplying the alcohol uh, for too long and now you have suddenly stopped it, right? So the skin kinds of like uh, goes into withdrawal. Okay, the skin reacts, the skin will show irritation. Uh, whenever you go out in the sunlight, your skin becomes red. Um, so these are the changes which, which goes on in the withdrawal phase. And this is the time when patients usually come to visit a dermatologist at least this is what i see in my practice okay so what the problem is that from here onwards if i want to uh, treat this patient or we want to cure this patient it, it becomes a little difficult okay as was the case otherwise okay now the skin has become damaged from the inside out now i have to i have to treat uh him or her uh you know like uh, with a with a longer period of time okay so now the treatment uh, regime becomes longer right so this is how it is now you have to repair the skin from in and out you have to um, uh, you have to prepare the skin in such a way that it is it is accepting the treatments which i'm going to provide 
so that uh, that is a absolutely you know wrong way to deal with um, uh, with with the skin conditions yeah absolutely so in case you want to save on energy save your money save your time and most importantly save your skin your health yeah. please go to the doctor at the first place so in case you have anything go to the doctor at the first place and trust your doctor that's really important and after a very common question people often ask especially you know teenagers because they know they'll have acne or they are already having acne or people with oily or acne prone skin that you know what kind of skin routine i can follow a market is flooded with products so influencers right. are also you know endorsing various products but we want to keep it really basic minimalistic so that we can go for it it could be consistent so uh, what basic uh, skin care routine we can follow right so, so um so it all depends upon the type of skin we are dealing with okay it's always uh, better to try to consult the patient okay uh, try to know their skin in and out okay from taking a, a detailed history okay of what all they have applied how was their skin from the teenage onwards if an adult comes to me i i usually go go through a lot of detailed history right so uh, what are, what all treatment have they taken so our treatment regime or our skin routine will depend according to that right i'll 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 tailor uh, i'll custom make my treatment regime according to his or her uh, you know skin conditions right so um, on a generalized manner if a, if an oily uh, skin acne prone skin comes to me i might suggest uh, him a good cleanser okay a good cleanser mm -hmm. might consist of a uh, few ingredients which can control the oil secretions something which we have we have we hear uh, quite a lot that is AHAs and BHAs right so alpha hydroxy acids beta hydroxy acids so these these are the uh, ingredients which you should look for if you want to control the oil secretions right and then if uh, now depending upon the grading of acne you uh, you form your treatment regime right if it is an inflammatory acne if there are a lot of you know pus uh, pustules pus filled lesions or uh, if there is cystic acne i might suggest uh, antibiotics or uh, other other treatment to control the infection right and uh, if there are too much of oily skin or i can see comedons uh, that is uh, i have mentioned earlier that is white heads and black heads mm -hmm. i might suggest something to clear the pores out okay kind of like pore cleansing uh, ingredients right so these are the treatment regime which i would suggest to my patients now along with that just to prevent scarring and to prevent any future uh, sequelae or complications of acne i might include one or two procedures as well okay so uh, see uh, a general notion of the patients is that uh, visiting a dermatologist is, is too much expensive becomes too much expensive at the end because uh, you know uh, they, they they might do a lot of procedures and stuff like that so it is not the case always okay so it's um, the doctor doctor has to decide whether this procedure is necessary or not okay so if uh, if if according to my clinical acumen if i feel that uh, uh, you know this could be controlled by just topical treatments i'll definitely go along with that but if i feel that okay i need to uh, you know intervene uh, through any procedures or or uh, stuff like that i definitely have to suggest that too right so this is my go to routine if you want me uh, to generalize to summarize the thing i would go with a cleanser i would go with a um, uh, an an antibacterial cream if the lesions is inflammatory i i'll go with the uh, uh, pore cleansing creams and i would also go with few supplements uh, uh, for acne Fair yeah. A doctor, you know, many times people feel, especially those who have oily skin or active prone skin, that it's because of the excessive oil or it's because their their face is not clean, it's dirty. So they keep on washing their face because you mentioned cleanser. Uh, yes. So I have my question: How? Um, what? A. Uh, what should be the type of the cleanser? B. How many times washing your face is okay? Okay. Okay, so um, see, I would never recommend uh, washing uh, washing the face too many times just because the the face is too much oily. Because the uh, you know the uh, continuous washing of your face makes your skin dry. Okay, and that in turn, what happens is that it provides a negative feedback to the uh, skin. Now the skin produces more oil because the skin has become dry due to the regular cleansing. 
understood right okay. so that gives a negative feedback so that that is not helping at all by the way okay so uh, what i recommend is that uh, washing your face twice daily with a medicated cleanser is more than enough okay along with a good skin routine that is that is more than enough but if you are having a gentle cleanser okay a gentle cleanser is different from uh, the 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 usual acne based cleanser a gentle cleanser uh, can be used uh, more frequently but i would still suggest um because everyone's skin is different right so i would still suggest twice or thrice daily in a day uh, is 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 an apt, uh, correct amount of to wash the face okay and after uh, what about sunscreens how important are sunscreens yeah so uh, a skin routine is incomplete without a sunscreen okay as a dermatologist i would always recommend uh, people even if they are not going out in the sunlight do apply sunscreen at least 2 to 3 hours hourly uh, on a daily basis okay so um, for acne too uh, there are uh, studies that uh, sun exposure can increase acne and also if we are giving any kind of treatments like a skin routine or you know any kind of procedures like peels or lasers a sunscreen is the must okay because uh, because du during the process of uh, you know controlling the oil secretions we might give something known as retinoids right retinoids kinds of like dries up the oil glands okay it clears up the pores mm -hmm. but it also makes your skin a little uh, sensitive a photosensitive right so that means um even the oral retinoids and the topical retinoids right so that means um when you are on retinoids if you go out in the sunlight it your skin might get irritated it might become red okay and then there might be uh, dermatitis and all okay so i always recommend to complete the skin routine with a use of a sunscreen a broad spectrum sunscreen uh, preferably for acne prone skin okay so there are multiple sunscreens available which are medicated not the commercial ones okay the medicated products is what i will suggest right yeah. uh doctor regarding sunscreens one more thing you know how to apply when to reapply how much amount to take and how much time before stepping out in the sun we need to apply sunscreens because people are so confused with all these you know okay so uh, let me tell you um, let me tell you how to use a sunscreen first of all uh, we will we'll cover the amount to apply on the face and the neck that's a two finger rule okay hmm? two finger length of sunscreen has has to be applied all over the face and the neck right this is the amount of sunscreen each and every uh, every individual should use okay that will provide the correct quantity to block the uv rays okay hmm? that is one thing right. second thing how frequently are we applying it uh, it's like two every 2 to 3 hourly okay hmm? every 2 to 3 hours you have to apply sunscreen hmm? uh, definitely if you're going out you're traveling uh, your uh, your sportsman uh, okay in these circumstances you have to apply 2 to 3 hourly if you are inside the house at least 2 hourly but i would still recommend uh, applying the sunscreen even inside the house uh, should be a part of your normal uh, routine okay hmm? because what happens is that the, the the lights which we have in our ceiling and the laptop lights the phone radiation everything has uh, the uv rays okay so uv rays kind of like um, uh, damages your skin can produce pigmentation can uh, you know increase the already existing pigmentation so i always suggest to use a broad spectrum sunscreen even inside the house as long as kids are uh, concerned you uh, there are many sunscreens which are available uh, which are safe for kids okay and uh, preferably uh, for sensitive skin i recommend physical based sunscreen so there are two types of sunscreen physical and chemical usually uh, i prefer a combination of both but in uh, in pregnant females or in kids i might go with a physical sunscreen right and uh, doctor you know because we are talking about acne and we also know especially those who have had acne or have a acne prone skin they know that you know treating acne is one thing and treating the post acne pigmentation or scars or pits they look like bigger challenge so uh, my question is how to prevent those scars or uh, you know uh, pigmentation okay uh... Uh, the only way to prevent such kind of complications of acne is to um, is to treat early okay it intervene early in the stage of acne okay so let me tell you in a very simplified manner and acne heals with uh, two um, um, uh, stages it's like 
post acne pigmentation and post acne scar okay either an acne uh, but first of all an acne might uh, heal without leaving any marks but uh, it can leave a pigmentation or it can leave a scar okay so pigmentation is basically uh, it's something known as um, post inflammatory pigmentation whenever there is an inflammation in the skin it can result in a pigmentation which is which is the case right uh, sometimes there are few acne more inflammatory acne or cystic acne they might heal leaving behind a scar in the skin okay a scar is basically small holes or depressions or pits in the skin right so you we have seen many people um, adult people who have these kind of post acne scar hmm? these are all because they have not taken treatment uh, prior like um, uh, optimum treatment in their uh, teenage time or in their early life right so these are the two complications mm. so what happens is that uh, the post acne pigmentation and all we can treat uh you know with uh, with milder treatments like peels or a good skin care routine but if it becomes a scar that is uh, that that will be there for life okay so you can't guarantee a 100% in improvement in post acne scarring right you can treat it there are multiple modalities of treatment even i do uh, on a daily basis okay there are combination treatments uh, of multiple um, um, procedures and lasers and prp and everything but i can't guarantee a 100 percentage improvement in acne scarring so uh, so my advice to the viewers will all uh, will be like uh, treat the acne when it is when it is young when it is still uh, in the initial stages don't uh, wait for it to uh, you know burst open or don't try to scratch it or pinch it make it more worse okay don't make it a pigmentation or, do, or um, uh, finally don't turn it into a scar right so uh, in case you don't want those pet scars please don't touch your acne and in case you have acne please go to the doctor a qualified dermatologist at the very first place now doctor uh, any dietary precautions that you would like to recommend anything that we should have or don't have when we are having acne or have acne prone skin right so yes diet uh, affects the acne uh, in, in a lot of ways okay first of all um, so basically as i was mentioning uh, the oil glands is the uh, you know the root cause of acne the oil glands becoming infl inflamed and uh, you know producing too much of oil is the root cause of acne so there are foods which can actually uh, you know stimulate these kind of oil glands right uh, high sugary foods okay mm, uh, uh, a diet which is uh, high in simple sugars for example sweets and you know uh, all these kind of um, you, you know um, jalebi and stuff like that okay these are all simple sugars syrupy fluid okay these are highly inflammatory sugars are always highly inflammatory and that actually triggers the sebaceous gland to produce more of oil and that in in turn increases the acne right also uh, milk and milk related products like uh, paneer and cheese again these are also inflammatory products okay i have uh, seen patients who just drink one cup of milk uh, in a day and uh, you know uh, acne breakouts can happen hmm? so these are the things which we should look for and uh, of course high calorie foods high calorie foods uh, i what i mean is junk food and oily foods again these are also inflammatory that can also trigger acne hmm? so on a generalized note i would uh, i would suggest to cut down on the sugars uh cut down on the milk based products and milk and uh, oily and junk foods okay now you'll ask me like what to include in the diet always include green leafy vegetables right uh mm. fruits okay colored fruits and all and have plenty of water okay so these are the things which you should include one more thing uh, one more thing which we intake increases the acne is whey protein right whey protein um, um, the gym goes and the and then you know, while working out we take a lot of protein right so whey protein also increases something known as insulin like growth factor in our body which indirects uh, stimulates the sebaceous gland the oil glands and that can result in acne so i've seen many patients who have just started going to the gym they have started on whey protein and they turn up uh, to me with lot of you know trunkal acne the acne on the back so that is also very common okay? Okay, now, Doctor, I'm getting so many questions from our viewers. I'll take them one by one. We have Pooja with us. Her question is, how does stress affect acne? Yeah, uh, stress does affect acne because uh, uh, you you see, 
during uh, many of the stressful conditions like uh, for example if you are studying and you have uh, exams and all you you might see a um, increase in the acne breakouts right if you are stressed you try to you know uh, while studying and all you try to pinch out or you try to scratch the lesions uh, without thinking of its complications okay so stress can increase uh, uh, you know all the chronic skin conditions okay let it be eczema let it be psoriasis let it be hair fall okay because stress uh, causes some kind of um, hormonal changes in the body okay hmm? so it increases the steroid production the cortisol production in the body and that in turn results in the acne lesions okay hmm? not just acne as i mentioned many chronic skin diseases can uh, exacerbate or uh, you know can become increased by stress okay so always i recommend uh, you know uh, a lifestyle management is also a big uh, contributor to the acne management right uh, following a healthy diet following a good lifestyle like working out following yoga all this matters a lot absolutely uh, we have swati vadas her question is how is acne managed in patients with psoriasis acne um, in psoriasis okay there's no uh, contraindication for uh, you know medications uh, which we use in normal acne in treating normal acne than with a patient having uh, psoriasis okay so you can use as i was telling depending on the stages of acne you can uh, formulate your uh, treatment plan accordingly okay if you are having psoriasis again it depends upon whether you are having oral medications for uh, uh, psoriasis or you are just having topical creams and all hmm? if you are having topical creams for psoriasis it doesn't really bother the treatment plan for acne or if you are uh, having any oral medications now uh, that is the time when i would modify my uh, acne management accordingly okay so the treatment rem uh, plan remains the same it depends on the grading of acne if you have white heads black heads or the comedonal face i would uh, suggest you a particular set of routine if you have inflammatory acne i would suggest you uh, like anti inflammatory acne uh, medications and if you have any cystic acne or uh, you know uh, large pus filled acne i would go otherwise so the treatment remains same fair enough a yeah. doctor you know as you also this is before that market is flooded with products these days we have various influencers on various social media platforms right. uh, endorsing products and we end up buying so many bottles in the name of skin care and we are experimenting a lot with them you know okay. one month i'm using a the other month i'm using b and i'm so happy because you know i have all these luxury bottles but my question to you is because we have so many people with sensitive skin acne issues are also uh, rapidly increasing so is there a correlation as experimenting with products on your skin a good thing okay so um uh, that's a good point which you uh, brought because this is now becoming uh, a billion dollar industry the aesthetic market is now becoming a very huge industry because uh, thanks to social media thanks to all the influencer marketing um, it, it the, the products sales has gone skyrocketing okay so the thing is uh, now everyone is an advisor everyone on the internet okay in youtube and instagram everyone advises a lot okay so i would not recommend okay experimenting okay i would still recommend consulting a skin expert or a dermatologist before trying anything on your face is was what my recommendations would be hmm? uh, because there is a dangerous trend in the market every each and every uh, person is coming with different set of products okay uh, new guidelines mm -hmm. you know um, uh, sites which can provide you products depending on your skin type okay hmm? so all these are all coming up but uh, that's a dangerous trend and i would i won't uh, suggest to experiment with the skin always seek medical help always go to a dermatologist he will uh, he or she will prescribe you the treatment based on your skin type because they understand the pathology they understand uh, the, the physiology of the skin and uh, how to take care of it yeah absolutely we all are different we have different skin issues and thus 
you know these products uh, on a generalized way is not going to help us exactly. and plus as exactly. the doctor have already exactly. mentioned in the initial you know in the session that uh, skin is our largest organ so please have some respect for that it, uh, it boosts our confidence level also so so maintain it that's really important one last so, question that i'll uh, like to think uh, is feroz khan's question his question is what is the role of zinc in acne treatment doctor yeah zinc has proved to be helpful in inflammatory acne i do prescribe zinc in many circumstances okay so uh, zinc has a role of anti inflammatory uh, zinc also increases increases the uh, immunological aspect of your body so it does help okay hmm? uh, but that is not the only uh, the, the sole treatment of my treatment uh, regime okay i might add zinc as a supplement uh but if i want to uh, include a retinoid if i want to include an antibiotic i i will go with that okay so sometimes what happens is that um uh, if the patient is feeding or the or, or the patient is too young okay so there are circumstances where i might not use uh, the treatment regimes very aggressively okay in those patient as a supplementation i i will definitely use uh, you know supplements like zinc and all right um doctor before we sum up the whole session any yeah. take home message for our viewers <laughs> yeah uh, so i would recommend the viewers uh, as i was telling earlier also um, stop experimenting with the skin uh, as uh, as you have clearly mentioned that everyone's skin are different okay the products which i am using might not be suitable to you okay so uh, your skin might be sensitive my skin is not uh i can drink a cup of milk without having acne breakouts but you may not okay so everyone's skin is different okay so uh instead of taking advice from from you know uh, random people or uh, by watching um, um you know social media or youtube okay take the help of a skin expert take the help of a dermatologist he will try to find out uh the 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 patho pathology behind your uh, skin conditions not just acne anything okay so um, do do not try any home remedies do not experiment with your skin just uh, seek medical care when it is needed okay sometimes you might not need uh, any any medical intervention an acne comes it might go without leaving anything okay so in that case it's fine but if you have any concerns if it is not resolving uh do take medical help without experimentation yeah Absolutely, thank you so very much, Doctor. Well, it was wonderful talking to you. Thank you for making this, uh, you know, whole session so informative and interesting at the same time. Thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, bye. And viewers, thank you for your excellent participation. Stay happy, stay healthy, take care of your skin, and take care of yourself. Have a great day ahead.